Okay, we're gonna take the upper gear case apart. I've already taken the shift mechanism out. And one note for that is that when that goes back in, it has a cut relief in the housing that has to face top right. You'll see the cut out in paint. The other thing is the shift shoe. So I bring that up a little bit closer. It has a number or a mark on it on one side. There is no mark or number on the other side. So the shift shoe always has to go with a thick end to the right when you put it back in. So make note of that, that the mark goes up. So it always has to go in like such. So I'll take the top cover off. I'll take the vertical, uh, the input shaft out. And make sure when you take this out, you will find that there are shims typically maybe stuck to the gear. And those shims are for right here. And those shims inside the top cover are designed to hold that bearing down. As you can see, it can spin in the case. So those shims are the bearing crush at the end of when you're shimming it and putting it back together. Um, those are measured at the very end and you measure between the case and the top cover. So you're gonna put 20 thousands of shims in here if you don't have a number to start. Measure the thickness and then you will measure uh, the difference between the specific um, measurement that you're supposed to have in the book and then subtract that from the overall dimension. So we'll cover that later. It's pretty straightforward. I can now take my input shaft out and there are plastic shims on really older drives but they are standard now with stainless steel shims. And there's an O-ring in here. Okay, so now you can see those old plastic shims. So once we've done that, now what we need to do is we need to remove this uh, top nut which holds the vertical drive shaft in place. I've already held up that lower fixture shaft and locked it in position, which will lock that in position so that the Vertical drive shaft cannot rotate. You have to do that in order to remove or install that nut. Now, in the book, it will tell you, make sure you follow along page by page, that these threads are left-hand thread, which means that they need to be loosened clockwise. They're on there pretty tight. So you pick a leg, whichever leg you want, that's gonna be the leg that's behind you. And as you break that fastener loose, your body weight is going to come back and you want to catch yourself on that back leg. Okay, so I'm just going to hopefully break this loose. I don't know how tight it's going to be and the bench is probably going to move with me. So I've got my foot under the bench. I'm going to get a little... Okay. Yep. And it comes off. And so you can see, I, I rolled back pretty good on that when I caught myself. Now that that nut's loose, I'm gonna remove it. Okay. And I'm gonna reach in and I'm gonna push up on that upper gear just to hold it up like that so you can see it. There are shims under it, so I wanna grab those shims, pull that shaft up, and you can see those shims under that gear. You wanna make sure there aren't any stuck to the case you're gonna reshim the drive probably unless you're just cleaning it and resealing it. Now, the other thing is there's another bearing in here and this is a loose cage needle bearing. That loose cage needle bearing should be marked if you're gonna reuse it. So what that means is what I wanna do is I wanna get a Sharpie. So that bearing's been run in one direction its whole life. And if you're going to reuse it, what you want to do is put a reference mark on it. So what I like to do is I simply remove the bearing and I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm just going to mark one end of it. That way I know which end goes up. And that's how I always reference it. I always reference up is the mark. So then when I put it back into that gear assembly, then I know which way it goes. The next step in your book is to remove 
the lower gear assembly. There it is. All right, so the special tool in the book um, is 3850604. There also, this tool is used with several other drive, so there are some adapters. So this adapter is kind of universal. It may be the right one, it may not be. Always check to make sure that that part number is the one that you need. Reach in, remove the cone clutch. You'll notice that the cone clutch also, right, is marked top. So it actually has a reference which way it goes. It's important that it is also installed in the proper position. On these older DPS drives, there's also a spring underneath that cone. That spring is not in DPS A or DPS B, a replacement for this. Now this tool goes into the housing and there's a very thin aluminum retainer that's threaded in the housing. This is critical. When you put this inside the case, the book will tell you to line the bolt holes up as best you can, one way. Take two of the top cover bolts, push down on the retainer, put the top cover bolts in, get them started by hand. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use my impact gun. I don't recommend you do this, but again, if you're going to do this, make sure you use it lightly. So I'm going to push down on the retainer, spin that in a little bit. I had a quarter inch, uh, quarter inch uh, electric ratchet, I think it was made by Skill years ago until the battery died and I couldn't get another battery and that was a great tool. So once I'm done with that and that's held in position, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tool and I'm going to break loose that retainer. That retainer also is standard thread, so it is not left-handed thread. This requires a half-inch to three-quarter inch socket. Don't use an impact gun, because you're dealing with aluminum and aluminum. You want to really go all this up and ruin it with an impact gun on it. Okay, same thing. I'm going to go counterclockwise. This is standard aluminum, and that's pretty tight. So that's torqued, as you can see, very tight, and you can see that I caught myself doing that. Turn it one full turn, don't go any further because it's got fine threads in the housing and you don't want to strip them out if you keep going. I want to take this retainer off. So I'm going to take and remove that. I'm holding down on it. I don't want to strip the threads out or let them pull out of the housing when I do that. Take the retainer, get the bolts out of it, drop them on the floor. Now, at this point, that retainer should be loose. Okay. Now, the next step is to remove the vertical drive shaft. Remember, I told you don't tighten that up, and that's the reason is because if you tighten those bolts up and you you uh, have the drive is a little bit torqued, twisted in the fixture. And what's going to happen is the vertical drive shaft and that fixture tool is going to be offset and you can't remove the shaft. So just remember that, that's important. So what I always do is I reach in here, I grab the vertical drive shaft, I pull it straight out, and you will see the retainer here and how thin that is in a second. I'm going to flip it upside down, hold my thumb inside that cup, flip it upside down, and now you can really see how small that retainer is. It's not very wide and it's very important that you bolt the retainer down in the case. Next step, I'm going to slowly remove and drop that shaft down and what you will see is you will see two what are known as retainer keepers and those just fit in the groove of the shaft so I need to take those off. All right, at that point now I can flip it back over and I can take the gear off. So I'm going to turn it back over, pull the vertical drive shaft out of it, and that is going to require a new one, slimy. And now you have that retainer that has the groove in it for those keepers. 
and that fits there. Now this is the lower gear. So now the lower gear, okay, also has a bearing in it, and that bearing needs to be marked. So I'm going to do the same thing right now. I'll set that on the table. I'm going to wipe that gear lube off a little bit on the top of it. Oh, there are two of these, and they're identical. So if I forget which one they go in, I'm kind of got to buy new bearings. Don't put them back in if you don't know. So what I'm going to do on the lower one is I'm going to put another mark down here. So now I have two marks on that. I have to write that down someplace. I'll write it in my service manual, and I'll write two marks for the bearing is the lower gear. Underneath that, there are shims down inside the case as well. So there's shims under the lower gear. That puts the gear at the right height, puts it where you want. We're gonna measure that. The upper gear has shims underneath it, so that puts the upper gear at the right position and your pinion gear has shims to place that gear. So in Volvo, we're gonna measure all three gears and we're gonna shim the gears to the case. So the measurement is the case is machined to a proper tolerance within a couple of thousands. We're gonna measure the gears to fit the case. 